So I wanted to talk today about social anxiety. I haven't really experienced much of it until after the pandemic of this year. Beforehand, I was, well, I wouldn't say completely fine. I suppose, I suppose growing up, I had a little bit of social anxiety, which is normal, I believe, for a lot of shy kids coming into the world. And especially if they weren't treated as fair as the rest. Um, it would naturally knock down their confidence and kind of make it to where it's harder for them to communicate with others, which is a spot that I was in. But that's when I was very young. And, you know, over time, it kind of just grew. I spent the um, majority of my time meeting people online, and it became easier for me to communicate through a screen or keyboard rather than face to face. But that was all diminished. I want to believe around a few years back, possibly, I took some time to go out and quote unquote see the world. Not exactly, you know, traveling huge and far, but rather getting out of my comfort zone and doing things that I would normally do. And, and doing things that I wouldn't normally do. So, um, in that case, you know, it would be going out to parties, uh, meeting strangers, chatting it up, um, networking in a sense, while still vacation with them. Make friends. That's all I'm really trying to say. I, I was trying to make friends. And um, while well, through this process, it went on for a little while, I gained a new confidence and became a more open person. And it was fun. It was really nice uh, experiencing it all, but then the pandemic hit, and around that same time, I began to close up again and needed another outlook. So I was dating, and I know I usually talk about um, my exes or like my past relationships or something on my channel, but that's not what this is, or at least not entirely. You see, I want to talk about social anxiety because today I was at a, my university and I was walking through the entirety of it, which I have not done yet. This would have been my first time. And I saw a lot of new and interesting faces. And by that, I mean, there are a lot of people that I've never seen before. And um, in a sense, um, people with their own styles that made them unique, that really like lit a fire in me you know because at this university it was much more diverse not just in the race but also in like culture and style as it was you know in my previous like community college or high school so it was really nice seeing all these people because they didn't really mean mug me or you know treat me unfair or rude they kind of just smiled you know waved said hey and kept walking about their day and it was really cool. Now, unfortunately, I haven't really been out as much since the pandemic. I've been trying, but um, it's the pandemic. So I've been boxed in and uh, I began to sweat uncontrollably. When, have you ever seen, well, I'm sure a lot of you have seen like the movies and TV shows where somebody will be at a very high place and they'll be afraid of heights, you know, somebody will tell them, hey, don't look down. And then they look down and, you know, it, it scares the life out of them. They get all disoriented and nine times out of ten, they, they'll probably fall because they look down. It like put this new like fear into their head. Well, it's the same fear, but, you know, it's like enhanced it now that they actually know, you know. And, um... That's kind of how it is with my social anxiety. Whenever I'm in like a group of people, like in a crowd of people, I'll begin to sweat. And it's not just like, they don't even have to be like within arms of reach of me. Like grocery stores give me social anxiety from time to time. Populated places like, um, I guess, stadiums for sports or um, school basically, because this is what this kind of was centered around give me social anxiety and it was already hot today as is but 
I knew at one point I wasn't even sweating because of the heat anymore. It was because of all the people passing by me. I don't necessarily know if it's because I have a fear that like they'll attack me or treat me some certain way, or if it's just like this constant thing that I haven't really understood yet that makes my body just soak water like a tsunami, but it happens and that's cool. Um, it's natural and normal as far as I'm concerned. Now, I wanted to talk about how I used to cope with said social anxiety before I started talking to people more, and that's by um, my imagination. As a kid, I, well, I say kid, but I was more so a teen, pre-teens, that whole little area range, basically um, leaving middle school to high school. I used to uh, date online a lot, and though I couldn't physically be there with said person, we would always video chat and call and text, yada, 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 right? And what I would end up doing whenever I felt like I was losing it in a social place like a grocery store, which, you know, it wasn't like I was just going to break out and break down and, you know, start attacking people. It was just more so like a, I feel like there are too many eyes on me. I feel like I'm cornered. Kind of like what I assume being claustrophobic would feel like if you were in a tight space, except it was the opposite because there was tons of room to move and walk around in. It was just a lot of people that, you know, gave me that kind of nervous flare and so what I would do was I would pretend that the partner that I was dating or in this case I'll just say girl to make it easier um I kind of feel like I might confuse people by just saying partner all the time in this case because I was young the girl that I was dating because I couldn't actually be with her it felt great to pretend that she was walking alongside me you know what I mean? In this case, I had made her my peace of mind, so I'd sweat less because it gave me comfort knowing that, hey, you know, the person at the time that I loved was near me and with me, even if they actually weren't. It just helped my brain. And to take it a step further, believe it or not, I'm sure this is why some people would distance from me. I'm sure why some people call me names. I'd walk around with my hand kind of folded or clutched in as if I were holding something like my phone, but I wasn't. I was holding like an imagination, an imaginary version of my internet girlfriend, which is so dumb saying it out loud and looking at it now, but back then it, it genuinely helped me. I didn't sweat so much. I didn't, you know, like when you feel like you're being watched, at least in my opinion, your walk becomes different, the way you stand becomes different, you present yourself differently because you know people are paying attention. Well, in this case, it wasn't. I was. Uh, it was as if I was at home because I wasn't so focused on the outside world. I had been trapped in my own little bubble to keep me sane in a sense. And um, that, the holding hands thing wasn't the only thing. I'd also walk around and talk to myself as if I were talking to them and would imagine what they'd say back in a reply. I say them, but her. I'd imagine what she'd say back if she were to reply to me, which, I mean, I didn't do it too loud or out loud because I guess that really would have raised some flags for some people. I'm sure others, if they did see me, probably thought I had earbuds in and thought I was talking to someone, but the ones who noticed that I didn't have earbuds in were probably thinking, this person's crazy, you know? But um, that's what I did, and it helped. Um, I'd say that I'm sure a ton of other people have done it or still do it. Maybe not necessarily with like the image of a girlfriend or boyfriend or something, but maybe more so of a family member that they've lost or a family member that gives them a peace of mind or you know some other figure in their life that helps them be calm, right? And um. I want to speak on that today because I was at the university today, today, and I wasn't doing that. Um, I have this app called CoStar. Uh, somebody that I used to talk to she introduced the app to me, 
and I use it not religiously but pretty often maybe once a day or so just to kind of see if not once a day then maybe once a week just to kind of see the quote that it would give me because it'll give you like inspirational or just quotes in general to kind of help you get through the day in my opinion and a lot of the quotes that they'd give me would actually match up to what I was going through in my life and um it just kind of boosted me you know to get through it and I read it today one of well the quote of the day today but I also decided to check out like the extra stuff they had for my day you know they tell your sun and your moon it's like an astrology kind of app I'm not entirely like sure of you know everything that it covers but I know that it like I know that it basically reads I guess the type of person you are and helps you find ways to express your feelings more as well as find yourself easier at least that's the way that I'm using it right now and the app had said something to me like you're insightful which I still haven't looked the word up it's been a minute since I've heard it I just use it as a way to say that um, maybe I have knowledge that I can pass on to someone or help somebody with and it said that I was insightful during this phase of the earth and the moon emotional um, working on like expressing my emotions and myself finding ways to do it that I also need to connect with family and um, there was one big thing that hit me it said that you know I'm, I'm in this mood where I'm cutting people off and I'm not really caring too much about it and that's that's somewhat true I've I've had like four or five people block me in the span of a month now um, and I've really just been being myself and you know it, it kind of helps me see who actually wants to be there for me so if they come back around nine times out of ten I'm not letting them back in you know but it told me that the app also said that um I know where I need to be you know what I mean I shouldn't I shouldn't focus on the ones who don't want me I should focus on where I need to be and that I know where I need to be now that hit me because I didn't I didn't know where I needed to be and I wouldn't even know where to begin I mean I assumed maybe it was family because majority of my friends are doing their own thing so I'm not you know creeping into their life I am speaking to a few new people but it's not so much so that you know they're like begging me you know to come see them or something you know um, so I assumed that I know where I need to be must relate to my ex right um, I've gotten over my ex to some extent I'm still a little hung up but not not too hung up you know what I mean like I can hear stuff about her um, see pictures of her or something and won't really fall apart <laughs> But um, I thought, you know, that that's what they were pointing at. Well, I thought that that's where they were pointing at, that um, I needed to be with my ex and, you know, kind of mend the bridges that I've been burning and breaking or that people have been burning and breaking with me. And so I went to go check up on my ex. She blocked me from a plethora of platforms so you know that's not easy but there was one platform that she's on where she posts things about our life um well videos rather and i just swung around to see if she had posted anything new just to see if she was all right and how she's holding up because i was you know out of myself for a while and i just wanted to see where she was and she was doing fine she was great uh she's got a bunch of things that she's juggling leading to you know where she wants to be in life and she didn't really seem too affected by us not talking at all I mean it's, it's been a little bit since it's happened so it's good to you know it's good to see that she's moving on and I thought well if it's not for my ex then where do I need to be and I'm thinking that maybe it's here you know, I have a, I, have, I, I guess it's safe to say that I have a bucket's worth 
of issues, traumas, problems that I'm sure a lot of people could relate to. And I've been, you know, telling myself, hey, we should get back into content creating and working on making things. And so here I am now. And you, yeah, you listening right now, whoever you may be, whether it's a week from me posting this video or 10 years from me posting this video, assuming that YouTube is still going to be alive and well and that this account won't be deleted. Hi, um, this is me. It's nice to meet you. If you have any kind of um, if you feel like you relate to what I've been saying thus far, you know, don't be afraid to drop in the comments, um, maybe something, an experience that you've been dealing with or somebody you know who's been having the same experience, maybe ways to cope with it so that if anybody else comes through, swings by, they'll see it as well and they can also leave their own two cents on the matter. Um, I feel like that's about it. My channel's mainly just been podcasts, really. I'm enjoying the idea of talking over gameplay footage or footage of me drawing. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening.